born in 80, 23, or 24. Roman author, naturalist, natural philosopher, naval commander, Gaius Plinius Secundus, or Pliny the Elder. Today, it is a coincidence, but it's a happy little coincidence that we just so happen to be drinking a Modelo, brewed for those with a fighting spirit, right? Bruce us here, welcome back. Cheers, everybody. Happy 24 ounce Tuesday. Cerveza. Cheers. So, I brewed the Pliny the Elder kit last weekend. I was surprised to find that the recipe came directly from the brewery. I thought that was super awesome. I hit my 1070 right on the money. So I'm really pumped that it's going to turn out as it's intended. So I might have a beer here in the next few weeks that tastes pretty dang close to a Pliny the Elder double IPA from Russian River Brewing. I mentioned that we'd talk a little bit about Pliny the Elder today because he's such an interesting, interesting cat from the Roman Empire. He spent most of his spare time studying, writing, and investigating natural and geographic phenomena in the field. I mean, that doesn't sound too interesting to me. I mean, whatever floats your boat, I guess. Pliny the Elder is given credit for writing the world's first encyclopedia. And I guess if you spend all your time thinking and writing your thoughts down and studying the natural world, that couldn't hurt. Maybe you could write an encyclopedia. Pliny did. His natural history contained over a million words, 37 volumes. Yeah. I remember my grandma's old encyclopedia set. There was A, and then there was B, and then there was like C and D, and then E. Anyway, there were a lot of volumes. So, an encyclopedia, yeah, I guess is more than just one book, typically. Pliny attempted to document all known facts about the natural world. Okay. He claimed to have recorded 20,000 pieces of information. Although modern scholars say he uh, underestimated his own output. So perhaps he did more. That's not what interests me about Pliny the Elder though. How does the old verse go? Greater love hath no man than he would lay down his life for his friends. Brute for those with a fighting spirit. Pliny the Elder died at age 55 in service to his fellow man. While attempting the rescue of a friend and his family by ship from the eruption of Mount Vesuvius, which had already destroyed Pompeii and Herculaneum. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. The wind caused by the sixth and largest pyroclastic surge of the volcano's eruption did not allow his ship to leave port and Pliny died during that event, just going out and trying to rescue a few people. Mount Vesuvius eruption. How epic. I mean, he probably wasn't thinking that when his ship was stuck in the port. But, I mean, now there's a beer named after him. A really good beer named after him. There's an article in the New York Times saying... Here lies the skull of Pliny the Elder, maybe? Don't know if you could see that at all. Pliny the Younger claims his uncle uttered the immortal words, fortune favors the brave. Wasn't there a commercial recently? Someone said that? Fortune favors the bold, fortune favors the brave. You've got to be willing to go do some scary shit if you want your fortune. I think it was also Pliny the Younger that said either 
do something worth writing about or write something worth reading and my uncle did both obviously he wrote an encyclopedia he wrote something worth reading and he lived a life worth reading about and worth drinking a beer after Pliny the Elder folks cheers cheers to Pliny cheers to you and your heroes there's a lot of them out there so I actually talked more about Pliny than I had expected stuff just kept popping up as I was reading about him interesting cat for sure I hope my beer turns out at least close to the way a Russian River makes the Pliny because that's gonna be super super exciting if it does I've already mentioned I'm gonna bottle this one because I want to be able to share it and because I don't need 45 bottles of a double IPA I just don't drink a lot of lighter stuff I'll probably keep a six pack of it and if it's that good I'll sit and savor every drop and having only six man that's gonna make it even more special I've said that before I'm sure I'll say it again the fewer bottles I have, the more I'll appreciate it. And the better it is, the greater that appreciation will be. <clears throat> this weekend, I'm going to bottle the hop samplers. They've been sitting back in the back bedroom for a while now. Feeling neglected, probably. I went for the longest time without any cleaner. And I know I've made beers. I've, I started thinking, what have I been doing? If I didn't have cleaner, how have I been brewing? I've definitely had cleaner. I don't know what's kept me from bottling those hop samplers. They've just been sitting back there. It's been, what, three weeks now, maybe? It's fine. Fermentation's done. I'm going to get them in the bottles this weekend. I'll come back and do a video on that. We'll hang out out here, bottle some hop samplers, and really do a whole lot of nothing, pretty much. A friend and I always joked about my grandpa back in the day. My grandpa was a farmer and would speculate, what does he do during the fall, during the winter, when there's nothing to do? I remember going out to his shop and... He wasn't exactly a mechanic, so it's not like he's out there fixing motors and stuff. He'd just be tinkering around with stuff. And the little euphemism my friend and I came up with, not exactly a euphemism, would say he's out there holding the hose. I mean, he's just messing with hoses and doing stuff. And it's the same stuff I do out here in the brewery when I'm not brewing. I mean, I'm my grandfather's grandson, that's for sure. Sitting out here in the garage, like I sat out there in the round top with him on many days. Just tinkering, fiddling around. Couldn't tell you what he was doing. He used to fill me up a coffee can with water. And I'd use a paintbrush and I'd paint the floor. And it'd, you know, get a little bit darker until it dried and then it'd be the same color again. I'd paint the tires of his tractor and combine. They'd be even more black than they were before I put the water on them. But then they'd dry and I'd have to paint them with water again. It's good times being out there. But when I'm sitting out here drinking a beer, I'll start fiddling with little things. wonder if I left any hops in this the last time I used it. One thing leads to another. I'll start dreaming up ideas. And I think that's what it is. It's just being around my brewing equipment, having a beer. Makes me think of other things I can do. It inspires me. Hmm. Might give me an idea for another batch or... Maybe some stuff I need to clean. And cleaning is another thing you can do when you're fiddling around, having a beer. Might as well clean something. If you're leaning, you're cleaning. If you're drinking, you're 
thinking or stinking or something if you're not cleaning. Cheers, everybody. <clears throat> Hope you're all having a great week so far. Monday, done. Tuesday, done. All but the drinking. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday for a lot of us. Maybe more, maybe less for some of us. If you work every day, hope you got a lot of good beer to drink. It's kind of nice sometimes when you run out of things to say. Hope you got a beer. Hope you're drinking along. Enjoying a nice evening. My wife and I just bought the sixth season of Better Call Saul. We had to use Amazon Prime because it's not out on Netflix yet. So we haven't actually started it yet because with two kids, one's an infant, it's kind of hard sometimes to carve out the time. Or you'll have intentions to sit down and watch something and it doesn't happen. But looking forward to starting it. Maybe we'll do that this evening. We're going to have a beer. Then we're going to figure it out. Figure it out on the way. Cheers, everybody. Call me if you need to not talk, someone once said. I am also fluent in silence. Is there anything better than just sitting out, having a beer, and having no one yakking your ears off? After a long day, especially if you work around a lot of people, just to be able to sit with your own thoughts. And it's not often, you know, that you can even come to YouTube without being chattered at. I mean, what's the point of doing a video if you're just going to sit there and not say anything? I think sometimes it's nice. You're just watching a video and someone's just... Having a beer, giving you time to think. You can have a beer with me. We don't have to talk. I mean, I'm sure I'll have something else to say, but it's kind of nice to not have to sometimes, you know? I wonder if anyone would watch a no talking episode. Having a beer. No talking. <laughs> Something stupid this way comes. And it's not my neighbor. This time. No, I really have good neighbors. Well, I say that, but I don't really hear from them. Maybe that's what makes a good neighbor in 2022. I've often thought about that. You know, I'll, I'll wave and they'll wave back say hey they'll say hey back but I don't know if it's just me or if people just want to be left the hell alone I mean it's almost like if they were to see you coming I know if someone if someone were to be coming across the street to my house I think my first thought unless I was halfway to Jerusalem would be oh what what do you what what am I gonna have to do? And maybe they just wanna talk and that this never happens. So I, I wonder like if I were to walk over to the neighbor's house and they saw me coming, would they be eager to chat or would their first thought be, What am I gonna have to do? Maybe that's life in 2022. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. 
I just know there was a time when everyone knew their neighbors. And you can blame it on living in a big city. I mean, Oklahoma City doesn't have the most people among cities in the United States or anywhere. But there's definitely enough to be able to use the excuse, well, I grew up in a small town, you know, it's different when you live in a small community and know everybody. And maybe it is, but isn't every block, isn't every street in a neighborhood kind of its own little community? If you don't interact outside the house, then you're probably not going to be close. And I guess that's the difference. In our community growing up, I lived in a town of 400 people. And you'd see everybody at the football games. We celebrated together. We played together. We laughed and cried together. We went to school together. And then when you go home and you're living near these people, okay, that makes sense. Here in the city, when everyone does their own thing during the day and then comes back to the house, they've been dealing with people all day. And maybe they do just want to be left alone at night. And that's the only time we really see our neighbors. Hmm. I always thought maybe if I could put a little put a little newsletter together for the street for our edition. We could bring some people together. Not that we need to do that. I mean, I don't know. We're pretty happy being left alone. <laughs> We have our friends, they have their friends, I guess. It's just weird to live so close to people and not really know them, you know? You have interactions, but it's like, they live full rich lives in their houses, there and there and there and all back there. And we know nothing of those lives or those people. And it's just strange living so close yet so far away. Hmm. It's about it for the Modelo. The golden, full flavored Pilsner style lager with a clean, crisp finish. That's for sure. Cheers, everybody. That's about it. It's been a good, relaxing, introspective, quiet 24 ounce Tuesday. It's been good. Glad you came back to join me. Grab you a beer. Let's get this night going. And we'll see you back here on Saturday where I'm gonna bottle the uh, hop samplers. That ought to be fun. At least if only just to see you right back here and do our thing. Cheers everybody. Have a good week and I'll see you this weekend.